Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, to come and say something. Um, of course, you agree with me that I am overwhelmed. This is a moment like no other. And let me first take this opportunity to thank the Almighty God. Yes, it is God. I, I say it is God. Without God, we wouldn't be here. Um, I have gone through many difficult situations, but because of God, we are here today to celebrate that Today, the people of Kenya have made a choice, and that choice has been confirmed by our judiciary. Let me first and foremost say we are truly grateful as a team, as the Kenya Kwanzaa team. We are grateful to God because we have come a long journey we have worked hard. But as the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 20, verse 7, that some trust in chariots and others trust in horses, but we trust in God. Yes. It's not the waking up early, it is not the working long hours, it is the favor and the grace of God that has gotten us here. And we are acutely aware of that. Let me also, in a very special way, thank many people. Many people who have prayed for us from across the religious divide. Many people have prayed for us. In fact, I said, on um, the day I was given the certificate, I said, we were prayed into victory. I want to thank many people who prayed across this country. Many people fasted. And we are truly, truly grateful. And I want to say to the people of Kenya and to those who have made effort to get us here that we will not let you down. We will work hard and we will not let you down. Let me also in a very special way thank my friends. Starting with my wife Rachel who prays for me every day. Before I leave the door from that house behind me, she always holds my hands and prays for me. And my children, for believing in me and always encouraging me. Very special thanks goes to my friends seated here. The people we started this journey with under very difficult circumstances. I know many of you have suffered because of being my friends. Many of you have been taken to court. Many of you have been harassed, your children, members of your families. The only crime is that you chose me as a friend. I don't take it for granted that you are my friends we started with many of you who are formerly members of Jubilee. You know what happened to us. I do not want to say. But 
we believed in a better Kenya. We believed in a freer, more democratic, more rational Kenya. Along the way, many brothers and sisters joined us from other political parties. I want to also say a very big thank you to them. They gave momentum to our, to our journey. And I want to say Asante Sana. Let me also congratulate and recognize and appreciate the people of Kenya who believed in us. They went out of their way. Under very difficult circumstances, they believed in us. They listened to us. You know, the legendary Mamamboga and Boda Boda guys, they are the heroes of our campaign. They defined this election. They were the embodiment of our quest for a better economy for our, Kenya, for our country. The millions of Kenyans who believed in us. Today, by voting for me, the millions who woke up early to go and vote, they have not only voted for me, but they have opened doors and gates for their own children in every village, in every neighborhood, knowing very well that their children as well can become leaders. And every child is free to dream, and every child is free to aspire to any office and working hard, believing in God, they can get wherever they want to go. I think my election opens possibilities for all our children, irrespective of their background, irrespective of where they come from, irrespective of their financial status. But this afternoon, with the unanimous decision of the Supreme Court of Kenya, our lengthy, suspenseful, and protracted election has come to an end. My fellow presidential candidates and I made our respective cases before Kenyans and submitted ourselves to their sovereign decision at the ballot. After the result, for scrutiny to make sure beyond all doubt that the will of the people had prevailed. The court returned its verdict and I welcome it with tremendous humility. I salute the judges of the Supreme Court who have performed their duty with utmost fidelity to the Constitution. They listened to all parties, considered all issues, applied the law, and demonstrated their learning, impartiality, and patriotism. Their professionalism has elevated the stature of the judiciary, enhanced the place of petition process in legitimating election results as the true reflection of the people's decision and afforded the nation an opportunity to reflect. It also afforded come to terms with the implications of the last general election. I do not take this for granted, and I thank the judiciary in general and the Supreme Court in particular for staying strong as the shining beacon of constitutionalism and the rule of law, even in the most daunting 
of circumstances. And you know what I mean. The Supreme Court scrutinized, examined, and dissected and tested the declaration of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission against the high standard established by the Constitution. The decision vindicated the Commission's effort to go all the way and deliver an election that exceeded public expectation and fully met the constitutional threshold of a secure, transparent, free, fair, and accountable election. The return of a union, unanimous decision on all the nine issues confirms the fidelity of the IEBC to both the law and the Constitution. I therefore commend the Commission for their noble achievement at tremendous and regrettable cost to serve the people of Kenya by ensuring that their sovereign will is upheld. As I do that, we are all aware that there are men and women who lost lives in this election when they shouldn't. There was blackmail, threats, intimidation, and all manner of attempts to subvert the will of the people. The IEBC stood firm. The judiciary has vindicated the IEBC. This appreciation takes us to the point of proper appreciation of the just concluded legal process. Many of our supporters were a little unhappy about the delay, and some might have been tempted to impute bad faith in the petitioners who they say they saw to be taking advantage of the law to frustrate their wishes as expressed through the ballot. A lot of this anxiety is the result of long-standing suspicion of national institutions, especially when political contestation is involved. The Constitution of Kenya 2010 has done a lot to create comfort in institutions and the rule of law. And we continue to make encouraging progress on the path towards becoming a higher trust society, standing fully on its constitution. It was therefore perfectly legitimate for the petitioners to go before the Supreme Court to have their questions answered, doubts assuaged, and fears allayed. By exercising their constitutional right to take advantage of opportunities to establish the truth, the petitioners tested the result and inscribed upon it the highest stamp of judicial, legal, and constitutional approval. Our electoral and judicial institutions have won, and the Constitution has asserted itself and prevailed. My esteemed competitors now have a credible basis on which to consider the outcome, and we are vindicated by the choice of the people of Kenya. The court's decision completes the loop of institutional stewards of the rule of law, entrench our constitution and express the sovereign will of the people who have articulated themselves quite eloquently, directly, and through their constitutional institutions. I congratulate all patriotic Kenyans who presented themselves as presidential candidates. It is not an easy decision, and a national campaign is not a walk in the park at best. I want all of you to know that your effort is acknowledged and deeply appreciated. Wahiga Maure and Ruth Mosheru, George Wajakoya and Justine, Justina Wamai, the Honorable Raila Odinga and the Honorable Mother Karua. May the spirit of love for country and selfless service lie long in your hearts and may Almighty God always remember you.
competitive electoral politics can make and has made our politics an arena utterly devoid of, the, of grace. This fills the life of political candidates with loneliness, worry, and exaggerated sense that the stakes are do or die and elections therefore matters of life and death. It poisons political competition, exterminating the sporting spirit which unites winners and losers by enabling them to access the grace to define their relationship in terms of what they share and not what divides them. Democracy is expected to unite a people, strengthen their society, and improve their institutions, and must not become an acrimonious, fearful, and desperate enterprise. We offered alternative visions and missions and submitted to the sovereign decision of the citizens of Kenya. We are only competitors, not enemies. We vied to unite and strengthen Kenya, not to divide and weaken it. I therefore consider all of my competitors to be my worthy compatriots. Kenyans are united in the quest for a better society that is kinder to its children, gentler on the vulnerable, respectful of their rights, and committed to serving them. Those who voted for me, as well as those who voted for my competitors, want the same thing for themselves and for their children. I honor this aspiration, and I am committed to do and to rise up early, work hard all day, every day, so that we can realize it together. My deputy and I and the Kenya Kwanzaa team pledge to make Kenya a country of everybody and everyone. My administration shall do justice to all, regardless of their social status, religion, ethnicity, gender, whether they voted at all or whom they voted for. I therefore extend a hand of brotherhood to all my competitors and to all their supporters. We are not enemies, we are Kenyans. Let us unite to make Kenya a nation where everyone shall be proud to call home. My administration will recognize in full the now established tradition of honoring our leaders who have served this nation and shall not in any manner interfere with their privileges and their entitlements in retirement. They are revered elders of our nation who deserve respect at all times. It is now time for us to prepare for the day when we wake up to the momentous duty to serve Kenyans. Let us all reflect on our contribution and look forward to build this country and nation together to achieve the glory of Kenya, express its heritage and splendor, and fill every Kenyan heart with thanksgiving. As I said earlier, the hero of our campaign is the legendary Mamamboga and Boda Boda. The hero of the election is one, Wafula Chebukati and the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. And the hero of our democracy and the rule of law and constitutionalism is our judiciary. We celebrate, we celebrate all Kenyans, and I pledge and commit to work as the Kenya Kwanzaa team in making sure that we take Kenya to the next level. I will be making a much more comprehensive uh, statement further down the road. I thought I should uh, recognize everybody who has made a contribution towards this uh, success uh, today. As I said, it's not about me and my good brother Kashagwa and the leaders who are here. It's about all millions of Kenyans 
who have made a contribution to us getting where we have. I will shortly be uh, putting a call to my good uh, friend, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, we have not... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have not uh, I haven't talked to him in months <laughs> uh, but shortly I will uh, be putting a call to him so that we can have a conversation on uh, the process of um, transition <laughs> Yeah. I know he he worked hard in in his <laughs> in his own way but uh, the people of Kenya have made a decision. And we have absolutely no issue with the democratic choices of any Kenyan. You remember I said earlier when I chose to support Uhuru Kenyatta I did not give him conditions that he must support me. I have made that very clear. So I take uh, um, no offense at all that he decided to choose and support somebody else. And therefore, we will remain friends as we have uh, been in uh, the context of where we are. And, <laughs> and we look forward to um, we look forward to building on the foundation that's already there in the many issues that I worked with him and be able to take Kenya to the next level in the many things that uh, we would have wanted to do that we did not do. Uh, we are a very responsible people. Government is a, is a continuous enterprise and we will complete all the projects that have not been completed, as we have said, and we will build on that foundation the programs that we have committed to the people of Kenya, and we will hit the ground running because uh, we are aware of what we need to do. I will also be putting a call to uh, my worthy competitors, beginning with the uh, uh, Raila Odinga, my uh, worthy competitor, with his Azimio team, so that we can begin to contextualize how we are going to work together for the people of Kenya. Those of us who will be working from the executive and the Azimio team who will be working from the opposition. And as I committed, as I committed to the people of Kenya, I believe in the rule of law. I do not believe in the handshake stories. I believe, I believe in an accountable government held to account by a responsible opposition. That is how Kenya is going to move forward. Uh, and, and so I look forward to a conversation on how they will hold us to account and make sure that we deliver on the commitments that we have made to the people of Kenya and public resources are put to good use in an accountable manner and so that we can reap the benefits of what the people of Kenya have done in electing us into, uh, into office. Um, we will then be working with all the other people as we, as we get down to uh, um, 
doing what we committed to the people of Kenya that we do. I know there is huge expectation. Many people are texting me and asking, when is the Hustler Fund going to be launched? <laughs> many people are asking me, many farmers want to know when subsidized fertilizer will be available so that they can get on with a journey or with a business of growing food for us so that we can reduce the cost of living. Many farmers are asking when we are going to begin the journey on agro-processing and value addition. Many people across Kenya want to know when we are going um, to begin our housing program. I want to commit that uh, as soon as we are sworn into office, in fact, beginning tomorrow, I will be working with the people in government offices so that by the time we get sworn in, we will have um, work to do and begin the process of implementing our plan. Uh, let me say uh, to all of you, I know many people have come here, I know many members of parliament are here, many governors are here, many senators are here, members of county assemblies. Let me take this opportunity in a very special way to recognize our legal team. Led by senior counsel Fred Ngatia. And senior counsel Kiyoko Kilukumi. And senior counsel Kirago. And all, and of course, my chief agent and team leader of the legal team, Professor Abraham Kidure Kindiki. <laughs> and all the senior lawyers here, let me not mention all their names. Uh, we had the best legal team anybody could assemble. And we are very proud of you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for protecting our victory and for doing your bit. I remember when I talked to, it, to them, I told them those of us who are politicians have done our bit. We handed over the button to them, and I told them they should not drop the button. And uh, they brought it home in one piece, and we want to celebrate them. To Abigail Makofi Jameni, our Makofi. Let me also say, for good record, that these great men and women, our legal team, volunteered their services for free. It is amazing that they said this is a patriotic duty they are doing for their country. And they were going to donate their time, their intellect, their professionalism to make sure that they do that is what is right for Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I sincerely appreciate on behalf of the Kenya Cancer team your sacrifice, your contribution, and your commitment to this journey. Asante Nisana. Of course, there are many volunteers. <clears throat> there are many volunteers who came across. There are many people who supported us in many ways. There are many people who contributed merchandise. Many people contributed resources of all types. Uh, merchandise, airtime, um, equipment, transport, uh, and it was just amazing. Uh, we, we ran a campaign. Many people believed that I was very organized. But I want to tell you, it was, <laughs> it was not me. <laughs> Everybody made a contribution. That's why the whole thing looked seamless. We didn't have to push nobody to do nothing. Everybody did what they were supposed to do without asking. So I want to say thank you very much uh, to our team. I want to announce that 
This marks the end of the politics of deceit and the politics of betrayal and the politics of conmanship. It is the end. We want the politics of the Kenya of the future. Every leader must be held to account on what they say. And they must match what they say with what they do. I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, that with the opportunity God has given us, we want to have a country based on the rule of law. As my deputy has said, the criminal justice system will be reserved for fighting criminals and criminality and making sure that public resources are protected and criminals are brought to book. The criminal justice system will never be used again for political reasons. Let me say it again. The criminal justice system will never be used again against those who have a contrary view, political view, to ours. I want our competitors to rest assured that though the rest of us have been subjected to threats, blackmail, intimidation, and unnecessary fights, I commit that under our administration, nobody will be vilified or victimized or prosecuted for holding a contrary political view from ours. This is a democratic country, and we want to remain so. Our competitors have nothing to fear, like the way many of our supporters have had everything to fear for being our friends or for holding a contrary view from those who wielded power. So, um, and as I have said, <clears throat> we will respect our president, Uhuru Kenyatta, in his retirement. We will give him the respect and dignity a former head of state deserves. We are honorable people. We are not petty and we are not jealous. He has done a good job and he will have his place in the history of Kenya. So nobody should peddle any falsehoods or that we harbor any, um, anything against uh, the president of Kenya. When our uh, good friend Raila Odinga retires also, we will give him the respect he deserves as a, as a Kenyan leader who has made a huge contribution to the democracy of our nation and every other leader that deserves uh, respect. So to all our friends out there, we want to um, grow a nation. We want to build a society that is based on the rule of law and respect for our elders. So uh, let me leave it there for now. The rest of the things we are going to say, I will take maybe one or two questions so that uh, we can conclude this press conference. Nani tasema kwa Kiswahili? Tajibu maswali kwa Kiswahili. Si tumekubaliana? Kama mnataka niseme Kiswahili kidogo, nimesema ya kwamba kwa niaba ya team ya Kenya Kwanza tunamshukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya kutupatia ushindi. Ki ushindi si ya William Ruto na Gashagwa, ni ushindi wa mamilioni ya wa Kenya walioamka asubuhi na mapema kupiga kura ili hata na watoto wao waweze kupata nafasi ya kuwa na ndoto ya kuwa viongozi katika taifa letu la Kenya.
Nimesema vile vile ya kwamba tunawashukuru wale wote hasa IEBC ambayo ilisimamia uchaguzi katika taifa letu la Kenya. Mbali na changamoto za makomishna ambao waligawanyika pale mwisho IEBC ilifanya uchaguzi ambao ulikuwa wa uhuru na haki na kila mkenya ametosheka ma MCA wamechaguliwa wabunge wamechaguliwa ma seneta wamechaguliwa ma governor wamechaguliwa na leo mahakama ya upeo imeidhinisha uchaguzi wa rais pamoja na naibu wa rais kumaanisha kwamba IEBC ilifanya kazi ya, ya muhimu na nimesema shujaa wa uchaguzi huu ni wafula chebukati na makamishna waliohakikisha ya kwamba uchaguzi huu haujapatilishwa na watu ambao walikuwa na njama ya kuharibu uchaguzi wetu Nimesema vile vile um, tutapata nafasi kama viongozi kuongea na rais wetu ambaye anaenda kustaafu ili tuweze kupanga mambo ya kukamilisha succession kwa njia na taratibu ambaye iko na heshima na nimesema vile vile kama vile tuko na desturi kama taifa viongozi wetu wote wale ambao ni elders wa taifa letu viongozi wanao staafu kama rais watapata heshima na watapata haki yao katika mahali pa heshima katika taifa letu la Kenya na hakuna wasiwasi yeyote kwa mtu yeyote kwamba kutatokea na jambo lolote yale ambayo yamefanyika waswahili wanasema yaliyopita si ndwele tugange yaliyomo na yajayo na hivyo ndivyo tutakavyofanya tumekubali vile vile ya kwamba kamwe criminal justice system katika taifa letu la Kenya haitatumika kuendesha mambo ya siasa katika taifa letu wakuwa na msimamo tofauti tofauti ya kisiasa bila ya kujali ya kwamba watashirutishwa watalazimishwa watafunguliwa mashtaka yasiyo na maana hiyo haitafanyika katika taifa letu pale tukiwa viongozi katika taifa letu la Kenya wananchi wengi wameangaishwa wamesumbuliwa wame um, eh, wamefanyiwa mambo mengi kwa sababu ya misimamo yao ya kisiasa na tumesema haya mambo tutayakomesha tunataka kuwa na inchi ya demokrasia mahali maoni ya kila mtu ni ya muhimu na hakuna mtu atashurutishwa kuwa na msimamo mmoja ama msimamo mwingine any questions good people thank you very much i don't think you have any questions wako na swali ya kusema nini sema jina Uh, thank you so much, Your Excellency. Congratulations on your win. My name is Ibrahim Karanja. I work for NTV. Yes, you have repeatedly right. said uh, during the time the IABC declared you as a winner, and even now when the Supreme Court has upheld your win, that you will work your government and with the opposition to the extent that it remains in the opposition. From where you sit, how should Kenyans take then your move of incorporating members of parliament who were elected in what were opposition parties in the election. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You know, as I have said, there are many people who today are in Asmio, not because they want to be. <laughs> there, we have many people who are forced, blackmailed, threatened into belonging to Azimio. There are many leaders, if many of these leaders, if they tell you their stories, they are horror stories. Many of them were told, if you don't join Azimio, this uh, 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 court case, KRA, will be brought on you and many other threats. And that's why I said the other day, our good brothers 
competitors on the other side, they have to really think of how to take their coalition into the future now that they don't have the instruments of blackmail, threats, and intimidation. Because they have built their coalition using force and blackmail. And you know, this is a country, a democratic country, and you cannot force anybody to be, to make political choices they don't want. Imagine even a law was passed that makes people prisoners of a certain coalition. That you, once you, you, you sign a, a piece of paper here, and they make sure you sign that piece of paper at night when the lights are switched off. <laughs> and then you are told, once you sign, you cannot leave. You know, that is not a, a country that uh, uh, we all uh, wanted to, 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 to belong to. So, there will be people who will want to join Kenya Kwanzaa, and you know a majority of the people who have decided to come and join Kenya Kwanzaa actually were people who we were together before. They were just boxed into a corner, threatened, blackmailed, and told they must belong to a different formation. So, because we are a country of free choices, yeah, I want to I want, to, I want you to know that we will have an opposition in Kenya. There will be no handshake like the one we witnessed before that creates a mongrel of a government where nobody knows where the line is. That one will not happen. But there will be people who will choose because of preference, because, uh, for example, I'm sure maybe you're talking about uh, Ali Roba and his team. Ali Roba and his team are members of Jubilee. We were together. Or Kirait Murungi for that matter. These are people we were together. They were just told you must be here, otherwise X, Y, and Z will happen. Now that we are breathing fresh air and freedom has arrived, they are now... <laughs> they can now make the choices. Thank you very much. Any other question? Yes, uh, my good friend. Mpatia will a microphone. Congratulations, Sir President William Ruto. Asante. <laughs> my name is Kevin Mihona from Wangaza TV. Yes. Your Excellency President, there are young men like us who had some different thoughts about the verdict of this uh, ruling of the court. What would be your encouragement to them? They are burning. Mm -hmm. I've been from the streets of Nairobi, and some of them are burning. Kindly tell them a word of hope. Thank you. <laughs> as I have said, as I have said, two things. We are a democracy. And in a democracy, the majority have their way, the minority have their say. Number two, I have said here, the administration we are going to run is the administration that is going to serve all Kenyans, irrespective of whether they voted at all or whether whoever they voted for. We are going to serve the people who voted for us and those who did not vote for us because we are going to run the government of Kenya. And the government of Kenya is going to be the government of Kenya for all Kenyans. So they have absolutely nothing to worry. Nothing to worry. We are going to serve all Kenyans equally. Yes? Mr. President, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, my dream was to be a professional footballer, but I had to kill that dream. What's your plan now that you're in power in terms of stadiums <laughs> and making sure the football in this country works? Because there are so many dreams out there have been killed because of individual selfish reasons. What's your plan on that one? The same way the people of Kenya have made my dream uh, uh, a citizen from nowhere come true. As I have told you, I will work hard. You have read our manifesto on matters to do with sports. 
and we will work hard to deliver on our commitment so that people like yourself and many more who have dreams and their dreams stagnated or died because there was no opportunity that we create that opportunity so that people like yourself or even uh, other people who have aspirations like yours can also attain or make their dreams come true. That's how. Yes, one last, one last question. Yes, give, give a... Yeah, my name is Ken yes. Jenga Wamboy from Minoro TV. Yes. Uh, we understand that uh, from the Constitution, Chapter 9, Article 141, the President shall be sworn in uh, uh, the first Tuesday after seven days. What is this one thing that you will promise Kenyans that you will deliver within the first 100 days once you assume office? There are many things uh, in Jenga, Wamboy. And how is Inoro, by the way? <laughs> it's, uh, it's good to have you around. And uh, I, I want to promise you that um, you will be treated equally like all other, all other Kenyans. I know sometimes uh, people think, uh, the people who really fought hard against us, that we have a graduates. We don't. We are Democrats. And uh, we will work together. However, I will, uh, your question on uh, the first 100 days, let me not say it today. I will, I will be making a statement on my inauguration. Just be patient, Kidogo. Sawa bwana Njenga. Asante. One last one. Where are my good friends from Citizen? <laughs> Citizen. <laughs> no, no, it was... <laughs> uh, Citizen. Where are they? How are you? It's okay. <laughs> yes. Um, congratulations on your win, uh, Mr. President. You. My name is Brenda Wanga from Citizen TV. <laughs> Um, I know you have said you will give a comprehensive statement a little yeah. bit later on yeah. on what you intend to do in your first 100 days. You've said that in your manifesto before, mm -hmm. but I know uh, most of us are quite concerned and would like to know what your plans are in regards to fighting graft. That has been quite a big uh, issue during this, uh, this campaign. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's a, it's a fair question. Uh, and how is uh, my good friend Leto, by the way? <laughs> uh, and say hello to Chemutai Goinchi. So, um, as I have said, I am going to make a comprehensive statement. And I want to promise you that among the things I want to do on the 100 days, one of them is going to be about tackling corruption. So expect a statement and expect um, um, my, there are two things that I said in the manifesto. Number one is the judiciary fund. And number two is to have an accounting officer for the police and the entire criminal justice system so that they will never depend again on resources from the office of the president. They will have their own independent budget and an accounting officer so that they can go 
after anybody that is involved in graft or in wastage or in theft without getting permission from the office of the president. We will treat those institutions as the Constitution expects us as independent institutions. But I'm going to make uh, a statement about uh, on that or as among the things that will be in my 100 days to do list. Sawa. Very good. Otherwise, uh, 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 I think we can leave it there for today. Mimi nataka ni waambia asante sana for coming. All the good friends from the media, thank you very much. We are going to um, be sharing information with you as often as we can. And uh, I am just requesting that let's put the campaign behind us and let us look into the future together. We may all have supported different candidates, but uh, the people of Kenya have made a choice. Sindio? Si sasa tujipange tu kwenda mbele pamoja. Bas, asanteni sana na watakia baraka ya Mungu. Thank you. All right, kindly let's remain seated. Kindly let's remain seated for a minute.